Hello you dirty dogs and welcome back to One on One, the most in-depth football show on YouTube. On today's episode, we're going to choose the best young players in the Europa League from groups A to D. We're then going to rank them in the following categories. Future club legend, could move on, stay put, could go either way. But before we get started, a few rules. They have to be 21 or under and they have to have represented the club at least 10 times in all competitions. Otherwise, they're just prospects. And if we hit a meaty juicy tasty 1.5k likes, I'll do groups E to H on next week's episode. So do yourselves a favour and hit that like button. Let's go. Leon. Now I could have gone with 21 year old Maxence Kakare here as he's made a solid start to the season, but instead I've stuck with 18 year old academy graduate Ryan Cherky. Now despite only featuring for 700 minutes last season, the attacking midfielder put up some frightening numbers. These included a monstrous 4.7 dribbles, 2.4 shots and 1.7 key passes per 90. By the by, that's only 0.8 dribbles per 90 behind Neymar. What's French for woof? Le woof. Now while his goal threat was minimal, his creativity was truly elite with his 0.3 expected assists per 90, putting him in the top 6% of attacking midfielders in Europe's top five leagues. This is largely unsurprising, giving his knack for progressing the ball into dangerous areas. In fact, his 13 progressive carries put him in the top 1% for his position. A progressive carry is when you move five yards towards the opponent's goal in one movement or entering the penalty area at any given moment. This was a strikingly similar total to Jack Grealish at Aston Villa. However, with just a solitary goal in his 35 league and appearances and a shooting accuracy of 31%, Cherky clearly needs to work on his song foire in front of goal. That's French for composure, you uncultured swine. I think his category picks itself. He's a great talent, but he needs the minutes, so he should definitely stay put. Rangers. Now, according to FBREF, there's only three players in the Rangers squad that are 21 or under. So not a huge selection to choose from. However, in 19-year-old defender Nathan Patterson, the Jers certainly have a player with huge potential. And his progress isn't going unnoticed. The right back was subject of a £5 million bid from Everton in the summer, which Steven Gerrard eventually brandished a joke. Now, despite being widely tipped as a future star, Patterson has found first-team opportunities at Ibrox hard to come by. For example, he only made three league starts last campaign, although did feature five times in Europe. This is largely down to the form of 29-year-old captain James Tavernier, who contributed to 20 goals in 29 starts in the league as Rangers won their 55th league title. Now, Patterson is under contract until 2024, so the Govan club are under no pressure to sell. Another one that needs a meaningful amount of minutes before he moves on to pastures new, so I'm saying stay put. Sparta Prague. Now, Adam Lozek has been an important first-team player at Sparta Prague since he was bloody 16. Since then, the right-footed centre-forward has gone from strength to strength, putting up an incredible 22 goal involvements in just 18 league starts last campaign. The only thing that's curtailed his progress of late is a nasty injury. He suffered a metatarsal fracture in 2021. Despite this, the Czech international was still linked with a £15 million move to West Ham in the summer. Nothing materialised, but he clearly hasn't got too down about it as he started the season in fine fetter once more. And given he's tied down until 2024, Sparta are bound to get a good fee for him. I think one more season in the Czech top flight should be the limit for a talent like Lozek, and he should move on in the coming windows. Bromby. Now, there's some really exciting young talents at Danish side Bronby, including Anis Ben Slimane and Mads Hermansen. However, I've opted for central midfielder Morten Frendrup. How's the pronunciation? Felt good. Frendrup starred in central midfield last season, making 31 appearances for the boys from Vestergen as they wrapped up their first title in 16 years. However, Bromby may be forced to cash in on him before the end of the season, with his contract up in 2023. Transfer mark value the player at 3.15 million, which I think would be a total snip. Category should move on. Monaco. At 24.3, Les Monégasques have the youngest squad in Ligue 1. However, one player stands out head and shoulders above the rest, and that is Aurelian Chouameni. The 21-year-old racked up an astonishing 3,073 minutes in league play last season, underpinning his importance to Niko Kovac's side. So, what makes him such a talent? Well, for starters, his defensive numbers in the 2021 campaign were outstanding. Over the course of last season, he averaged 5.2 tackles and interceptions per game, 
marginally more than Chelsea's N'Golo Kante. And he isn't just a midfield destroyer either, outlined by the fact that he was actually winning more fouls than he was conceding. As well as a great match intelligence, he also had the running power to exact a pretty demanding press, which is a prerequisite for top coaches like Jurgen Klopp and Thomas Tuchel. And I would not be surprised if they were heavily interested in Chewamen. This is handsomely demonstrated by his defensive pressures last season. He completed 656, 80 more than anyone else at Monaco, and the 10th best return in the division. These numbers made all the more impressive when you consider that Monaco averaged the third highest amount of possession in Ligue 1. He's also looking much more composed on the ball at the start of this season. In 2021, he completed around 50 passes per game, 2.6 long balls, and had a pass accuracy of 83%. This season, he's upped his game, completing 65 passes, 3.2 long balls with an 89% pass accuracy. If he carries on like this for a whole season, he surely won't be at the Principality much longer. Probably has the raw talent to be a club legend, but I think come the end of the season, it will be time to move on. PSV. Now Daniel Malen has departed for Dortmund, Englishman Noni Madueke is the obvious choice. The Barnet native began his career playing for Tottenham Hotspur, captaining their under-16 side and making his under-18s debut when he was just 15. And his rise through the ranks continued to be meteoric even after moving to Dutch shores. After five starts and five goal involvements for young PSV, he was promoted to the first side age 17. Last season, Madueke made 24 league appearances for the club, although only seven of those came as stars. Despite the limited amount of minutes, he still managed to put up an impressive 11 goal contributions. This season, he is making light work of filling that Malin-shaped hole, putting up an amazing 10 goals in his first 11 starts for PSV across all competitions. Now, he'll only be 20 come the end of the season, so for now, I'm glad he stayed where he was because I think he needs to get a meaningful amount of minutes under his belt. Come next summer though, maybe a different question. Sosjedev. Now we all know that 21-year-old Swedish hitman Alexander Isaac is a thoroughbred young striker. Last season in La Liga, he was taking 3.1 shots per 90, 2.6 of which were coming from inside the penalty area. Really solid numbers that eventually shook out to 17 goals in 30 league starts. His XG was actually 16.47, which tells us a few things. One, there was very little luck involved in his goal haul. He thoroughly deserved all 17 strikes. And two, he's developing into a pretty decisive forward. However, the former Liverpool target it recently signed a contract extension until 2026 with the club upping his buyout clause to 90 million euros. So I think it's safe to say he's going nowhere fast. Stead. Sturm Graz. Now if Kelvin Yeboah's name sounds familiar, that's because he's the nephew of former Premier League legend Tony Yeboah. My god, what a strike that man had on him. Now, despite his young age, Yuboa has already had a pretty nomadic career. So he joined West Ham's academy as a youngster before transferring to Serie C side Gazano. He then trained with Alborg in the Danish Superliga before signing for Austrian Bundesliga side WSG Tyrol. I'm sure that's pronounced Verstje. Not out this mouth. Yeboa then rose to prominence at Tyrol by scoring four goals in one game against Austria Vienna in the cup, eventually earning his move to Europa League side Sturm Graz. Now at 21, Yeboa appears to have come of age after a couple years of inconsistency. At the time of recording, he's averaging a ridiculous 4.7 shots per 90 in the Austrian top flight and has already scored four goals in his seven league appearances. That's two goals short of his best ever domestic haul. If he carries on like this, I assume a bully club will come calling. And if that happens at 21, you got to jump ship. Move on. Napoli. Now, there's not a plethora of young talent at Napoli, but I do like North Macedonian international Elif Elmas. The midfielder arrived from Fenerbahce for £15 million in 2019 and has been on the peripheries ever since. Last season, he made 33 appearances for the partner pay, but only three of them arrived in the form of starts. It would appear that new manager Luciano Spalletti has slightly more confidence in him than Gennaro Gattuso, as he's already given the player two starts in the league. Now, what Elmas truly excels at is his economy on the ball, very rarely losing it and completing 90% of his passes. However, 
the rest of his underlying numbers yet to really kick on in a meaningful way. The number of shots he's taken, for example, have dropped year on year for the last three, and his key passes have peaked at 1.5 during his tenure in southern Italy. Not monstrous for an attacking midfielder. Off the ball, he makes a useful 1.6 tackles per 90, but the rest of his physical stats, let's say, are pretty underwhelming. Feels like it's shit or get off the pot time for Elmas at Napoli, to be perfectly frank. So this season could go either way. Leicester. Leicester really only have one under 21 player of note in their Europa League squad, and that is local lad Luke Thomas. The 20-year-old's breakthrough campaign came last season, where he made 12 starts following injuries to several of Leicester's key defensive players. And he did okay, and at 20 years of age, there's still plenty of time to develop. However, you look at his numbers, and certain aspects of his game have already become apparent. Even at a glance, it's clear that he excels off the ball rather than on it, making an excellent 60 pressures per 90 and 2.4 blocks. This would put him in the top 15% of fullbacks for those metrics across Europe's top five. However, on the ball, definitely a downgrade on the likes of James Justin, making fewer progressive passes, fewer carries and completing less dribbles. His contract runs until 2024, but if he harbours aspirations of becoming a first team player, I feel like he's got to seize the opportunity a bit better and in more convincing fashion than he currently is. Which isn't meant to sound critical, because after all, Leicester are a top six club now. Category-wise, I'm also going to put him in either way. Spartak. Now, I must admit, this is somewhat of a guess. However, 21-year-old defensive midfielder Niall Umdurov caught my eye when I was surveying Spartak's season last campaign. At just 20 years old, he put up 1,500 minutes in the centre of the park for Spartak as they finished second behind Zenit St. Petersburg. The deep-lying midfielder chipped in with four assists, which was a return only bettered by three of his teammates. And this season, he should theoretically benefit from the loan departure of Alex Crowell to West Ham. Although his numbers at the start of this season have looked decidedly average. A bit like my RPL knowledge. Now in his first five appearances, he's only completed 2.2 tackles and interceptions per 90. Seventh for passes, 12th for pass accuracy... If he continues like that, he's going to let this opportunity slip through his fingers. Safe to say, he should stay and establish himself. Legia. I mean, Spartak was speculative. I'm not even going to try here. I apologise. Extract Larsa fans, I need your help. Now, I narrowed it down to two players. Make Naroki and Jürgen Chelizaka. Am I in the right ballpark? or I just ballsed it up? Let me know in the comments. Olympiakos. Now, I've opted for 20-year-old Michael Karbalnik here, who is on loan from Premier League club Brighton Hove Albion. Now, he broke onto the scene in really impressive fashion in the 18-19 campaign, when he starred in Legia Vorsor's title win, putting up five assists in his 26 starts. Unfortunately, didn't really show that level of promise on the English coast. And it would appear that Brighton are in no hurry to have him back, with Olympiakos given an option to buy at the end of his loan deal. Now, the Greek Super League has only just kicked off, so there's nothing of note to reflect on performance-wise. Can he prove Graham Potter and co wrong by starring in the Europa? But another one that could go either way. Or let's say stay put at Olympiakos, where he actually might get a chance. Frankfurt. Now, 21-year-old Norwegian Jens Petter Horgar moved to Milan after 24 goal contributions in just 18 starts at Bodo Glimt. Unfortunately, not given much of a chance in Serie A. Only three of his 18 appearances were starts, although he did manage to chip in with two goals. And his underlying numbers were pretty respectable too. In fact, strikingly similar to Brahim Diaz's. I don't think his departure was a reflection of the performances he put in. I think that AC Milan just saw an opportunity to triple their investment. A much more shrewd club now under the watchful eye of Gazidis. So yeah, category, stay put at Eintracht. They're like a rehabilitation clinic for AC Milan's broken toys at this point. Fenerbahce. Again, this one took a little bit of digging and I've come up with Dutchman Ferdi Kadioglu. Now Kadioglu killed it in the Dutch second division for NEC Nijmegen aged 17. However, that was way back when and since then he's really failed to command a starting place since moving to the Turkish Giants. His output has been fairly impressive. 10 goal involvements in just 14 starts. And this season, new manager Vito Pereira has clearly recognised his potential and put a little bit more faith into him. So stay. Royal Antwerp. Now I've opted for Michel-Ange Balikwisha here. The right-footed left winger put up nine goal involvements in just 19 starts last season for Standard Liège. So I was pretty surprised when I saw that Liège had agreed to sell him to Royal Antwerp, who finished 10 points above them for just 4.5 million. Although Liège are a selling club, having made a profit in the last four windows. Although when you look a little bit closer at Balikwisha's top-line numbers, 
Maybe Liège have pulled a bit of a fast one here. 1.2 shots, 0.9 key passes, 0.9 dribbles. I think with those sort of numbers, he's going to struggle improving on his nine goals and assists. Although he did have an impressive shot accuracy of 55%, the highest at Liège last season. So at least when he does manufacture an opportunity, he puts it on target more often than not. Another one that could go either way. Nice and vague from me. So something a little bit different for you this week. Did you enjoy it? If so, hit that like button. And if we get to 1.5K likes, I will do the rest of the groups like I said before. Which young star are you most excited about watching in this season's competition? Let me know in the comments and I'll hit you up in the first hour. If you are new to Euro Football Daily, then we would love to have you as a subscriber. Get those notifications turned on too so you never miss another episode of One on One. Take care of yourself, you dirty dogs, until I see you in the next episode. Bye.